Okay.
Hello, everybody. Now, before we get started, as always, I want to give a shout out to the lovely music we've been listening to during pre-stream here. This is Dreamer by Declan DP. You can find their information on the lower left-hand corner of the screen. Thank you to Declan and everybody like them who makes other free to use or low-cost assets for us streamers so we can have better streams. Thank you very much. Yeah, I'm gonna switch over to the collab chatting so y'all can hear me and my partner. Hey. All right, we are live on my end. And we are live on mine. Oh my God, I don't have your model on. I literally just sat here and was like, oh, everything's <laughs> fine, everything's ready. And then you, this is... you have stream brain. You have a I severe do. case of stream brain. <laughs> I really do. Okay, mm. I've got your Fugi up. All good. Hello, everyone. Hello. Um, Mary, I did. Oh, thanks, Evie, for the redeem. Hello. Um, Mary, let me read your message real quick because it was a big one. Um, your mum used to know this guy who would repair the washing machine when she was younger. His name was Dan, so she started calling him Dan, Dan, the washing machine man, and this part reminded me of it. And I'm Yes. Nice. Do you know how many times I've been called like Dan the man or something in my life? Like, mm -hmm. just because my name is that, please. <laughs> <laughs> no, but, it's a lovely thing to reminisce about. Yes, but it is I, Deus Kane, also goes by the name Dan, here with Dan the Draconian for our third Dan and Dan collab stream. Huzzah! I, I know, crazy. Yeah. Thank you for having me. Thank you for having me. Likewise. So, um, we, uh, as I said in my Twitter post, today we shall sit and enjoy the tea while enjoying tea. Because you're British and I literally have a cup of tea here. So, oh, yes. Yeah. So, but. Uh, oh, okay. Dan the Man is a shitty nickname, at least Dan Dan the Washington Washington Man has his demonition name to the name. There's also Sam Sam the Orange Juice Man. Oh my gosh. Oh, poor Sam. Poor he's, Sam. Just, he's known for his orange juice. <laughs> My brain keeps saying Danny Boy, and I don't know why. Oh, because it's from a song. <laughs> oh, Danny Boy, the pipes, the pipes are calling. Yep. Oh, welcome in, Dalian and the Bushies. <laughs> Bush raid, hide your gardens. Please don't steal my garden. Uh, the sun rises. <laughs> welcome, Raiders. Welcome, welcome. welcome. Raiders. You know me. I was with Dolly Rain just now. I need no introduction. Mm. Uh, but my, my guest does. Would you like to introduce yourself, Deus Kane? Yes, I am Deus Kane, a variety type streamer here on Twitch. Uh, I play, as mentioned, a variety of games. I just recently finished Cosmic Wheel Sisterhood, which is a game that is probably best described as a visual novel, but it's not like any visual novel I've ever played. Uh, you're a witch who summons a giant space... Uh, lobster man, I guess. Who's like a Wait, genie a who gives space lobster man. Listen, he's got tail. That's all I gotta say. He's got tail and a lot of arms and legs. Anyway, wow. he's also a genie and he gives you magic powers or more magic powers because you have magic powers. But it's it's complicated. It's a good game though. I was also playing Legend of Zelda: Link to the Past until Hades Two came out, in which case I dropped Zelda like a hot brick and. Dove into Jumped Hades 2 this Hades week. Hades 2 bandwagon. Yeah, it's on the list for today. Done. It's on the list for done, today. I've, I've been so good today. Like, well, this past month, ever since it came out, mm. I've not touched it at all. It's sitting in my library. I'm waiting until next year. It is going to be the hardest thing to hold off from touching. Hardest thing to avoid spoilers for. I just, I don't know how I'm going to do it, but I don't want to play it until it at least, at least reaches version one. Point zero and comes out of early access okay i can talk about a f I, well first of all it's on my list and i want to talk about it today i'm sorry i'm gonna talk about it i will avoid some spoilers but i can talk about Please. some mechanical things that are in the early Base access game. they're they're Is in they, early access are now they also in the, are they in the first game as well these um i will mention i will mention the differences Oh, you're going to mention the differences. Okay. Yes, yes, yes. We'll see how I feel. If I feel it's approaching uh, spoilers. I'm very finicky when it comes to spoilers. I generally... I, I, I will not... I will I will 
specifically and deliberately not give you any plot spoilers at your request. Um, oh, perfect. And uh, the that only... That does include characters as well. Well, right? I was going to say, the only character thing I would probably mention would be what Olympians are in the roster for, like, powers. If you, if Which you want... should technically be similar to the first game, so I don't think I'll have any problems with that. Similar, yes, but there are some di there are some changes. There, there are some that aren't there anymore, and there's some that are there now. So you can, I'm happy to know who isn't there anymore. That's exciting. Okay. Um, but um, do we want to start off with gaming news? Then we'll just, I mean, we're already talking Helldivers yeah, two. We're so we just start. About gaming just, news, just start. So, yeah. Just start with Helldivers two. Or not Helldivers two. Uh, eighties two. We'll get to Helldivers two hey. in a minute. Um, yeah, I know it's true in a minute. So, um, so Hades 2 dropped, like, not this past week, but the week before into early access. Um, I've already beaten it. <laughs> I played well, it once. It. I played it wow. once on Sunday, and then I'm like, that was fantastic. I can't wait till my next stream. Turns Hades 2 back on and proceeds to play it for the rest of the night and not do my chores. And a, a bunch of time on Monday and Tuesday. And <laughs> I beat the game. Oh my god. The addiction is back and it's glorious. Um, so, non-spoiler talk for Hades 2. Um, mechanically, it is a lot more polished than Hades 1. Because I actually went back and was playing a little bit of Hades 1. And I'm like, okay, I can see how they took Hades 1 and improved it in Hades 2, because Hades 1 now feels stiffer in comparison to Hades 2. Like it's a little it's oh, a little okay. stiffer, it's a little more rigid. Um if I can have a, a conversation about mechanics of the main character. If that's okay. Mechanics of the main character. Um Yeah, we'll we'll touch on it, I don't mind. So in Hades 1, you're playing as Zagreus. Uh, the son of Hades and, and son of Hades and somebody else, because that's a spoiler, and I, I almost slipped up on that one. Um, but he is very much the warrior archetype. He has a bunch of melee focused weapons. He, he does have a ranged weapon or two. Mostly he's melee focused, and he has normal attacks, special attacks, as well as a cast where he throws out like a gemstone as a ranged attack. And then you can also enhance his dash ability. I will uh, say. For Hades one, you don't need to spoil anything. I have, I have finished the game. I'm also trying to be uh, polite to anybody Which, in your chat who hasn't who hasn't run into that yet. That's true. That's true. Um, yeah. In Hades two, you are playing. Uh, I won't say their name, even though that even though basically that I secret is, is spoiled up immediately as who they are and what their relationship is to other people. Um, but the new character, whose name is Melanoway is a caster archetype as her primary starting like class so she is more about like mid-range long-range fighting and her cast instead of throwing something out like zagreus does she actually puts a circle on the floor and any enemy that enters into the circle is slowed down basically to the point of like melee enemies are stopped like flying enemies can kind of move through it a little slowly and if something's charging, it'll have like velocity and it'll slow down as it hits it. But basically you have a, a thing you can drop on the ground as you're running and trying to like run around the room and dodge stuff. And if guys run into it as they're chasing you, they can't follow. Mm -hmm. So it's a lot, it's, it's more focused on control, but it doesn't do any damage. Right. However, okay. unlike Hades one, all of your attacks, all of your buttons, have a secondary feature. Your attack, your special attack, and your cast can all be charged for a different version, oh, okay. which does something different depending on the weapon you're using. So, for example, the staff that Melanoy starts off with, her basic attack, she's just thrusting forward. The charge is a line shot that goes in front of her and behind her. It's a line across the field. So it's really long damage. Her special is she throws out like a little ball of magic, like a fireball. And the charge is basically a big one that when it hits a target, it'll explode and do AOE damage at the destination. And the charge cast is the same thing, but when it expires, it detonates and damages everything that's caught in it. And interesting. once you dash, if you hold down the button, you start to sprint, which is faster than your normal movement. 
And all of these are important because when we're talking about boons from the gods, they can upgrade any of those eight options. They can upgrade your normal attack or your charged attack, your normal special or your charged special, your normal cast or your charged cast. They can upgrade your dash or your sprint. So there are now like eight different slots to upgrade for your character and different different boon upgrades will upgrade different things. So some of them are just like, oh yeah, that cast that doesn't normally do any damage, now it does do some damage. Um, and they, they, really, they really went nuts with some of the mechanics and, and cool things that they did. But having that extra feature in it was really, really cool. Um, mm -hmm. You no longer have access to the Mirror of Nyx for upgrading your character. Instead, you get access to like tarot cards that they call Arcana. So you gather a resource, you unlock those, and the first one you unlock that everybody's going to get is that when you're charging your attacks, time slows down. Which is amazing because it turns every use of your charge moves into an almost cinematic quick time event. And it feels amazing. Because it literally will slow down the field. Everything will slow down and stop as you start to charge. And you can cancel out of it and move, or you can finish the charge and then get out of there afterwards with whatever you're doing. So, okay. Um, the Arcana system, unlike Zagreus, is uh, where you just learn it and you have it forever, but you have like two different versions of skills to swap through. Uh, the Arcana has like a cost for each card activated, and you can upgrade the total amount that you have. So it's like a loadout. So you can have like 10, 10 power worth of cards equipped, and you can upgrade that to like you know, 15, 20, or so on. I'm not sure what the cap is. I haven't hit it yet. Uh, I've heard a rumor of what it is, and it might go up or it might stay down. But um, So it adds customization for the build as opposed to just unlocking and having it forever. So... I do like that. Customization in how you play a game is one of the key points in whether I play a game or not. Yeah. Really. Um, so, as far as weapons, currently, Hades 2 has five of the six weapons permanently the, the, uh, in the game are available currently. Um, one of them is still hidden. We don't know what it is yet. Um, but they, they fulfill broadly similar uh, archetypes like there's the staff which is like mid range there's one that's close range quick attacks there's one that's close range like heavy attacks um, there's one that's focused on AOE there is one that kind of needs a little bit of work and I was watching a podcast talking about that particular weapon and it's like no we think this one's going to get like reworked a little bit because it, it needs a little bit of love and I'm like okay I, I can agree with that but um, they did a good job with the weapons you mm -hmm. also have gathering as a feature so okay, I think um, I saw a little bit of that. Yeah, yeah. So you naturally you can just gather, and they, and they've actually patched this to change it since uh, since I started playing. Because originally what you did is you always can gather plants, and then you have a gathering tool that you unlock as you progress through the game. So it starts off with like uh, a pickaxe for mining, or like a shovel for uh, digging up seeds to plant for for some other upgrades later. Or a fishing rod. Mm. There's also like a tablet that you can use to. The game describes it as like recruit uh, spirits to bring back to your camp, but it's essentially just gaining a resource. It's just gaining a different resource. Um, and originally, you could only gather what you had on your tool. They've since patched it out that you can gather whatever. You're never restricted out of that. But what tool you bring with you, you're going to find that resource more often. So. Ooh, okay. There are also familiars. You can have pets that will follow you. And all the familiars have Cute. basically a, uh, a feature that allows them to do one of your tool activities in addition to like whatever you bring with you, which is also cool. That's adorable, actually. Mm -hmm. I like that. I no pets. Yeah, it's great. Um, the character designs are amazing, as they were in Hades 1. I, I, had, pe I had people watching me when I was playing it that were losing their flipping mind uh, over some of the character designs. My favorite thing is one of the streamers I was watching like play the early part of this ran into like your mentor character who I'm not going to spoil who it is. What I am going to say is uh, 
They got a cutoff shirt and abs, and this guy lost his fucking mind. <laughs> like, abs for days. And that's not even one of the ones that gets me in trouble. They're just like, oh, oh, I would make mistakes with this person. <laughs> oh my oh, god. I love that. Yeah, there's there's one where I'm just like, she would fuck me up. I would do it anyways. <laughs> um now, the interesting thing, and the thing that I'm I'm going to use is to try and sell you on you want to wait for version one, you should play it now. <sighs> okay. From what I heard, the studio uh, creating, developing, and producing the game, Super Giant Games, was oh, waiting to release Hades 2 to early access once they had more content than they had for Hades 1. Yeah. Everybody assumed that meant early access Hades 1 to early access Hades 2. No, no. No. There is more content in early access Hades 2 than there is permanently in Hades 1. I know, I read that already. So essentially, Hades 1 has three zones and a boss zone that you fight uh, at the end of it. Hades 2 currently has six zones. It's wow. probably going to have eight by the end of it. That's that's what I suspect. It's, gonna, it's either going to be seven or eight. So we are... Uh, my, my, the best thing I heard somebody say was like, Hades 2 is Hades 2 and Hades 3 at the same time. And I'm like, yes, they understood the assignment. We love it. So. Fantastic. But it is a fantastic game. It is super addicting. Um, it is. That's the thing. As soon as I play it, I'm not going to want to do anything else. As soon as you play it, we're going to have to look for you in a week. And we're just going to find you in the corner, unshowered and unshaved. And you're like... Just one more run. Just one more run. And we're like, Dan, here's some tea. Wake up. Go to shower. You're going to be better. Thanks for the hydrate, Evie. Oh, and the <laughs> postage check frost. Thank you. Thank you. Mm. My chat always knows when I'm slouching or shrimping, as I like to call it. <laughs> but, um, but no, Hades, Hades 2 has more content out to do now than Hades 1 did. There's, It's still very much in early access. Um, so there, there are like placeholders for some of the characters in the game. Like they're, they're on screen pictures are our placeholders when they talk and like, you get a little like image chat come up for them, like in the, in like the chat box. Um, some of them have placeholders there. Some of them have like half complete ones that like all, look like they're partially done, but not fully rendered. And those are kind of an interesting design style. Um, I kind of like it, though I do. I am looking forward to it. Uh, the biggest thing that I want them to clean up a little bit more is the uh, like artifact cabinet. You still have that where like you give gods gifts and they'll give you stuff, and those stuffs will like make it more likely to find boons for gods or give you money on runs or things like that. Like the yeah. the cabinet um, that is back. All of those have the same image last time I looked. So okay. Um, yeah, they, they have a placeholder image currently. But the whole thing is there. The whole thing is there. Like, it is impressive and so good. Ooh. I'm still going to hold off. Okay. Okay. <laughs> but thank I, you. I don't thank blame you because there's there's a degree of, like, I played it now. And I'm like, I wonder how much this is going to change compared to launch. Because... Yeah, the one guy was like talking about like they're really gonna rework that weapon. And I, I figured out I think how it's supposed to work. And it it's not great. Um so yeah, I think they're right. I think they might rework it. So Okay. Well, hmm. You're Which, having an amazing time with the game, that's for sure. Yeah, I'm basically done with it. <laughs> um oh. actually, uh would you like to know what the weapon like types are? Like I mentioned that they have weapons. Mm, Do you want to know the type no, or is that too much? You. No, uh, okay. no, that's that's thank that's, you though. That's too much. Okay. Um, yes, that's Hades too. I didn't. I don't have anything to add other than it looks amazing so far. Um, and I will be playing it at some point um, next year. <laughs> might even might even be two years because it took them. Um, I was actually looking it up, and this is another thing I wanted to add to the conversation about Hades too because it's it's funny to me. Um, uh, 
Hades 1 released early access in December of 2018. And it was about two years in early access till it released. And I know that because I looked up something. I found a post online that somebody did where they were making fun of a person who did one of those, hey, fixed it, uh, like art things where like somebody goes and like changes art because they didn't like some aesthetic about it or something like that. You know what I mean? I must welcome in. Thank you for the regime. Yeah. Yeah. One of those. Yeah. Things. Yeah. Kind of... And this one was, uh, they basically are like, Aphrodite looks too androgynous. They look like the woke crowd got to them. So we're going to clean up the image and make her face more feminine, which a is just offensive on many grounds. You know, don't, don't be anti-trans. Don't be anti-woke. Just, just stay away from that whole woke conversation entirely. There's very little positive discourse in that. Um, and then also don't fuck with artist work. Like that's super disrespectful. Yeah, that's the big um, one. But the part that the part that really chaps my ass. The part that just Caps makes your ass. I love that. That makes me so angry. The picture they edited, which the the the, the tweet has the timestamp on it. It's from like this month. The picture they edited was Aphrodite from Hades 1. It's not her image from Hades 2. <gasps> oh, <laughs> so, that's hilarious. So and that's why I looked at the dances I'm like, wait, how old is this image? And I'm like, Hades 1 came out in just like fall, fall or early winter of 2020. They're bitching about an image that's at least three and a half years old. Wait, when was early access? 2018? Uh, so this image, I mean, depends on when she came out in early access and when she was available in Hades 1. But it's possible that they're bitching about an image from December of 2018. <laughs> That's ridiculous. They didn't even do their research. I know, and that's what I love it so much. That, that, and I saw the best comment that somebody made in re in response to that, which is, um, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. I, I agree, Evie. That was a fantastic image of Aphrodite in Hades 1. She's just as hot in Hades 2. Um, but my, my, my favorite thing about the whole thing was I saw a, uh, uh, somebody took a screenshot of the, of the offending tweet and added their commentary and their commentary was the last time somebody told Aphrodite, she wasn't hot. She cursed them with incest. Maybe you shouldn't do this. And I'm like, yes, that's the, that's the best comeback. <laughs> yep. Absolutely. Oh my she God. She's done a lot, actually. She's done a lot of terrible things, yes, but just th that that was being their comeback to, to somebody being like, man, this lady ain't hot. She looks like a dude. I'm like, don't say that to her. Of all the gods <laughs> and goddesses to offend by saying you don't think they're hot, not her. Not her. She was a petty bitch, but I like you think she's cool. Mm -hmm. Speaking of, mm -hmm. um, the world of you know, Greek mythology and everything. Um, season two of Blood of Zeus dropped on Netflix. I mm. don't know if you've seen it, but it, it, it does revolve around the gods. Um, I did binge watch the entirety of season two oh, and nice. season one, actually. Um, so I do recommend that if you're into the, into the whole um, Hades and Hades 2 area. Hmm. I might check that out at some point once I get Netflix back. I haven't had Netflix in years. I just haven't had time for it. So, do they make Hades the villain? Um, that is the cliche. You have to watch. Hades doesn't appear until season two. Okay, so he's at least not the cartoon, dev, cartoon Lucifer of, of season one, which is you know a thing I've heard people use him as. So mm -hmm. you know. No, she's. <sighs> Season one is just the whole show. I, I just need a season three. I need, I need more. Like, <laughs> no, I get that feeling. I feel that way about like uh, Hollow Knight Silk Song and a couple book series that I like. I'm just like, give it, give it now, give it now. But yeah. But uh, in uh, in further video game news, uh, we mentioned it a little earlier in passing. Let's talk about Helldivers two. Sony oh. and a certain PlayStation ID. Oh. I believe the collective internet response was no, no, you can go fuck yourself. <laughs> Which I love that we came together to do that. Like that is that is one of my favorite things. We're just like we just bullied a company into backing the fuck off. Also, like the devs were completely on our side because they weren't owned by like the publisher. So they're just like, yeah, no, review bomb our game. It's good for us. It'll get them to change their mind. 
I, I and it actually did. It, it actually good. It actually did. It's funny. I I had actually played Helldivers two at the beginning of April, left a negative review because I had some technical issues with the game, and like when I came back. Hi Gengar, welcome in. Hello Gengar. Uh, when I came back to to uh, Helldivers you two. I looked at the like review scores and it's just like there was a respectable number of negative reviews. Like it was like one out of every seven people that left a review left a negative one. And oh then this God. shit happened and it was like 200,000 negative reviews in a week. And people were demanding a refund. Uh, hey, you. Uh, that is my food. I'm just going to quickly run and grab it. I'll be right back. Okay. I've put myself on mute, but they can still hear you, so you can do a little chat if you want to. Okay, I will. <laughs> I'll be right back, I'll be right back. <laughs> so now, chat, Dan is away and he can't stop us from saying wonderful, nice things about him. He might even be able to hear them, depending on whether or not he kept his headset on and he has a wireless one. So yeah, Dan the Draconian. Great fella. Fantastic person. Right? Am I right, chat? Just give him all the love and smooches when he gets back. <laughs> oh, I love bullying people with love and kindness. For many of us, we're just like, I don't know what to do with these feelings. And it's also just like the best way to tease somebody. Because it's just, you're just like, yeah, I genuinely like you. And they're like, I don't know what to do with this. <laughs> Gremlin energy. Am I right, chat? But yeah. Um, yeah. Dan does not speak for both of us. I am fully in favor. If you like Hades 2, you're interested in Hades 2, go buy it now. It's great. It'll help the devs too. But also, if you want to wait for, you know, version 1.0 precisely, nothing wrong with that either. Because it's a good game now. It's going to be a good game later. It's going to be a good game all around. Hmm. Uh, I wish you could play those games, Evie. Yeah, you said you're... Did you say you weren't very good at roguelikes? What is it? Is that... Or was that somebody else? Yeah, you're not good at roguelikes. Yeah. I mean, this one is faster and smoother. Um, it does make Hades 1 feel stiffer by comparison, because I did go back and play some Hades 1. So it is a little bit better, but yeah, if you uh, you die a lot, it's supposed to kill you a lot. You're in the underworld. At least in the first one. I won't say where you are in the second. But, like, yeah, like, dying a lot's kind of the hey. point. I'm you back. Stay. Welcome back. Did you have your headphones on the whole time? No. Ah, I, I see. Sorry. Nothing. No reason. <laughs> okay. I'll just watch back the VOD. It's fine. You'll catch the spot, um, the pop, the spot where I tell Chad to bully you with kindness. Bully? What? Yes. No. <laughs> so, <laughs> I, I away when the PlayStation ID thing kicked off. Mm -hmm. Um. I was on my my holiday, my rel mm, relaxation mm. one, and when that started, I I saw it first of all because it popped up on Twitter. I got one of those notifications saying you yeah. might be interested, in that. and I was like, "What are they doing? What? What? I know I know they said oh they're going to make it a thing, but so then shut the game out of so many countries." That is still shut out of, I will add. They didn't reinstate them in those countries. This game is still not available in like 170 something countries or whatever it was. So I think that was a Steam thing because basically Steam tried to get ahead of all the like the requests for refunds by basically saying mm. like, okay, if you need the game and the ID and the ID is not available in this country, we will not list the game in this country because that's just going to cost us money because we're going to have to process the charge for the sale and then process the refund when you can't use it. So they can, the people in those countries are still able to refund the game. Yeah, um, they should be able to. It, yeah. It's more of a case of, I think, Sony laws in that country or something like that and like it affects the gaming laws by them mm -hmm. saying you need to have this idea to play this game so there's well I you don't know it's you can't just... I think I think PlayStation ID isn't available in those countries at all and since you're required to use it for Helldivers for that moment that's why they ripped it out 
Like it's it's just steam. It's just like mm. we're not we're not putting it there. Also, yes, Evie, bully friends with kindness by saying nice things as facts. That's how you do it. Don't lie. Don't deceive them. Just be like, you are a great person. I enjoy spending time with you. Is that sarcasm? I can't tell. No, it was honest. I'm I'm explicitly saying that to you, sarcasm. <laughs> oh. Okay. Like I'm being a sassy uh... little shit about it, but. <laughs> No, thank you. It's very yeah. kind of you. But uh, but no, Helldivers Helldivers 2, like it's it's one of those situations where the really, really big publisher pushed for a jackass thing. The devs didn't like it and and people are like, We're that's it, we're we're gonna ask for refunds and we're gonna demand our money back and we're going to, you know, review bomb your game. The developers like, Good, do that. That'll change their mind. Like, what I want to discuss though is the future of gaming now that Sony has attempted to do this mm. because this isn't the only game that they are attempting to do this with um, it's actually an aspect of all future games that are going to feature cross like cross progression yes. um, mm. you're going to have to log into some kind of third party or Sony controlled account um, in order to play your games on Steam or Xbox or something like that. They're going to they're going to be pushing for a Sony controlled space. And um I mean that makes sense because it it, it has be. it, it makes business sense because it has access to it and that's one of those things where so I think somebody brought up the point of like it would be one thing if they required this up front, but changing it after the fact was the thing that really pissed a bunch of people off. Like that's what really upset us. Because we already were playing the game, we already were loving the game, and then they went and did this, and it just it it took away the thing we loved. Um, I'm not terribly offended by companies asking us to do like, extra sign in stuff. It's annoying, um, but Ooh. like I've done that. Like I've 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 played individual games that had their own login. The MiHoYo stuff all has a login. Um, uh, League of Legends back when I used to play that long time ago had its own login. So like, I'm not, uh, I'm not bothered by having to sign into individual things or even like have one, like one general corporate thing. Like honestly, the steam application on my computer is its own kind of launcher. I'm, I am logging into that. It remembers who I am. So I only log in once, but, um, to have a secondary one's a little annoying, but ultimately yeah. I don't mind it too much. The bigger issue that I saw people raising about uh, Helldiver specifically is uh, security. Like Sony's had a bunch of leaks and, and your information is just not safe with them. And that was kind of the big thing. They're like, this is why we don't want to do it because these guys can't protect their data, which, yeah, yeah. I think that's probably the really big, most Absolutely. relevant thing. Like it's one thing if they want this information and they can keep it safe, but it's another thing if they want this information and also their idea of network security is basically like well we put foil on top of it it's fine <laughs> like <laughs> don't do just don't do that like so yeah it's it's <sighs> i think they're going to push for it for for a lot of stuff going forward in whatever ways that they can I'm but it's also that, a question yeah. of like I, I, cause I remember seeing a, a thing that came out like a, a week or two after Helldivers. So it was talking about like a bunch of games no longer being like exclusive or, or maybe it was, maybe it was another like sub publisher that worked for Sony a lot. That's just like, we're going to be doing cross platform focused games now. Mm -hmm. Um, yes, was, I have was read that. that was that Square uh, Enix? I think that might've been Square Enix actually. It's, it's a case of Sony is, is realizing that they are losing money by not being cross-platform yes. um, they are making most of their money through of course like the the, the playstation plus passes mm -hmm. or things but they're not actually seeing player retention they're not keeping players on the playstation they're getting the money sure but the play the play time doesn't match up and yeah. they're unhappy with that obviously the shareholders are like what's going on how are you going to make this more sustainable in the long run okay yeah so actually the the developer that said they were going to be focusing on cross-platform is square enix 
So like it's the Final Fantasy people. And that's a that's one of the last like really that's big things yeah. that Sony had as a as a platform exclusive. And I think we're probably gonna see a couple of titles that they try and like produce on their own as like an actual developer, much like the way Nintendo mm-hmm. does with Mario and Zelda. Um, like they're gonna do some stuff in house because they they're just not gonna risk having another uh, publisher, not publisher, developer like leave them. But um, mm-hmm. it's it's hard to say exactly like what the future is gonna look like. Sony definitely needs to yeah. change up its its system because I think. Um, like their PlayStation Plus is just weaker than Microsoft's uh, subscription thing. Like it's more expensive. There's fewer titles. Um, the exclusives they have aren't really great. So like Sony, Sony needs to work on a few things. And if if they keep pissing off devs like this, um, it's just gonna dig them a bigger and bigger hole. So it's it's probably a step in the right direction long term. Um, but it's, it's a step in the wrong direction short term. So it's basically gonna, they they have to make some mistakes to realize what the thing that any, any gamer would probably have told them ages ago, which is like, have good games. Don't be a shit. Don't be greedy. Yeah. Like, you know, and also protect your fucking network security so that we don't get hacked. (laughs) So we don't get our info hacked out of your system or we don't get doxxed because we gave you information like don't do yep. that. Absolutely. And also make it make it available worldwide in a lot of other countries because when a hundred plus countries can't use your service or any of the games that are connected to it, guess what? Like you're gonna lose people. Their and... life as well, because it's not even gonna affect that generation, it's gonna then affect the generation below it because the parents are always gonna be like, Well, we don't we don't support that anymore. That yeah. Kind of thing. yeah, that's entirely possible too. So yeah, it's um, it's it's not a great look for them. It is not a great look at all. So we will we will see how that pans out for them. But uh, I'm I'm strongly of the opinion it's probably gonna be bad uh, in the short to long term, which is funny considering like how much of a presence they had in like uh, you know PlayStation One, PlayStation Two generation, but like three onward, like they just haven't had as strong a showing as a lot of other consoles. So. Oh yeah, yeah, I totally agree with that. Uh, actually, as a funny little aside, um, uh, it's, it's kind of similar to this, or at least tangentially related. Um, there was a person online that asked a question about like what your what my top three favorite JRPG series was, and I wasn't allowed okay. to list anything by Square Enix, which cuts out a huge number of them, and the fact that it's uh, a genre and series locked it down even more. I gave them two answers relatively quickly, but I was struggling for the third one. And I kind of sat there and thought about it for a minute and went, I guess Pokemon's a JRPG. Like it's got elements of it. It's a Japanese <laughs> game with, with, with RPG game elements. Like it's not like, like it's not in that like setting, but it's not, it's, it's, you've got leveling progression, turn-based combat, uh, a, increasing series of boss encounters before you go for the big gauntlet at the end of the game against a boss. Like, yes, it's, it's a JRPG. Like, it works. Uh, it's, it's, it's weird that it works out that way, but it, it, it does. Um, and then I thought about it a little bit more and I'm like, you know, people have been complaining left and right about certain games, not making it onto the award shows. So I actually check the numbers and I compared Pokemon Scarlet and Violet against Elden Ring. Right. Elden Ring moved moved about thirteen point four million copies in its first. But it, I, th- I think the metric said by the end of March, and it released in February, so it was like five weeks. Yeah. Pokemon, a a, a not well uh, reviewed Pokemon game, I might add, moved like ten million copies in the first weekend. It like ten million copies in like three days. It was nuts. Um. By the end of it, like the, the current numbers essentially was Elden Ring was like 23 point something million units sold. Not dollars, units. And each copy of Elden Ring is like 60 bucks, 70 bucks. Um, compared to Pokemon, which had sold 24 point something million units. So it was actually sold a million more units than than Elden Ring in, in its lifetime. 
which uh, is one of those things I'm like, yeah, you know what? They're right. Why are things winning game of the year? When Pokemon's here make, <laughs> selling 20 million units of a $50 game. <laughs> like, <laughs> they make so much fucking money from that thing. Dear God. Yeah, they do. But uh, it, it's just funny about like game dev and game awards and the recognition we give games and, and what is and isn't a good game and whether or not like that even care matters to some people. Because like people people talk crap about that Pokemon game. I saw people loudly protesting the Pokemon game and making fun of it. They all bought a copy though. That's what that's how they were getting their screenshots of all the errors. Yep. So exactly. like Exactly. <laughs> You're contributing towards that moolah. Yep. So it's 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 its own silly little thing. Um and there are actually, you know, there are gamers out there who will see a game of bugs and be like, "Oh, I want to play that." Because it, it is flawed. Slowly you know? raise his hand. <laughs> I'm like, all right, that's interesting. Yeah. I, I want to experience these as well. I had almost no bugs. <laughs> I had, had almost none. And actually, uh, I found like an article that I read online talking about it, saying something to the effect of like, it mattered where you stored the game installation file. Like if you ran it off of like an SD card versus like the hard drive for the Switch that had a performance changing effect too. I forget which one we were supposed to oh. use, but like doing it the one way got rid of a lot of BS. So that was also neat. Yeah, that's interesting. Mm -hmm. the, the location affected that. I didn't know that at all. But... Yeah. yeah. But uh, yeah, fun little aside, apparently Pokemon outsold Elden Ring, at least in terms of units. I think Elden Ring being the more expensive game uh, did ultimately make more money. But... Yeah. Mm. That is not something. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we're we're going real off topic about that. Oh, sorry. But um, yeah, no, like Nintendo's probably in the best shape of anything for the consoles right now because it has Mario, who's always going to sell. It has Zelda and like Breath of the Wild and uh, the new one whose name escapes me. The one that came out just this past year. Tears of the Kingdom. Tears of the Kingdom. Thank you. Yeah, those are going to sell like hotcakes because they, they found a new Zelda formula that people are just crazy about, which I personally don't like. For me, it's like, this is Skyrim with some Minecraft mixed in it. And like maybe some Fortnite. I don't like this. Why am I running around with a tablet computer? I don't like this. Old man does not like. Grr. Bring me back to Zelda from the 90s when it was good. Which is probably part of the reason why I'm playing Legend of Zelda Link to the Past now. But, anyway. Um, but, like, it has major titles that are platform exclusives. You can only play Mario on a Switch. You can only play Zelda on a Switch. You can only play Pokemon on a Switch. Like, I honestly think that was a big part of, like, why games like Power World did so well. Because it's, it's very, very <laughs> similar to Pokemon... <laughs> But you can play it on not a Nintendo platform. You can play it yeah. on PC. Yeah, and I think that played a big part to its success as well. That yeah, you know, it wasn't tied to Nintendo because, because funnily enough, so there are so many communities out there that are very anti Nintendo and and, and understandably so. I you know I respect their opinion. Um, mm -hmm. Nintendo has its flaws, but so does every other gaming. Um, oh yeah publisher and studio um but um yeah there are so many out there who are anti nintendo um and then they jump on they jumped onto the the power world wagon saw that it was you know created with the the help of ai and then was like oh no what have we done like yeah well that was, that was that, that, we didn't exactly catch the the flaming gun with with that like the the smoking gun like it was one of those situations where I think the best description I heard from somebody is there's a lot of smoke. We haven't mm. found the fire yet. And I never, I mean, I, I never saw anything where we actually caught the guy like, no, 100% you did it. And here it is. It's just really fucking close. Like it's, it, yeah. it's so damn close. And like we, people were like digging up like interviews he had done where he's just like, yeah, I'm not an innovator. I, or I'm not, I'm not a creator. I'm an innovator. I will take somebody else's idea and remix it and make a new thing with that. That's even better. And it's just like, that's not a good look, buddy. It's not a good look. Mm -hmm. So, 
But I don't see people playing that really much anymore. Neither do I. Even with the update just just done now, it's it's faded like we all knew it would. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I actually had a my gym trainer liked the game a lot, and then he like lost all of his progress to an update. It's like, yeah, it's early access, and it's you know not really done, and it's you know they're they're fucking with it. So yeah, it's it's gonna break left, right, and center. And he just is like, nope, yeah. this burned a bridge for me. I'm not sinking this kind of time into a game again. I should have listened to you. I'm like, yeah, thank you. You should have. <laughs> but uh that actually that does tie to my last topic for gaming news which is a, a personal thing gaming oh. studios doing dumb stupid stuff oh what have we got here then uh microsoft did an announcement a couple weeks back about closing a couple of game uh game developers including the one that made the award winning Maybe, maybe just award nominee, but def but definitely in our hearts, game award winning, Hi-Fi Rush, which is a fantastic no, I game. Know. I and, know. And and that, mm. uh, that, that I saw so many uh, people upset about that and like pointing out like with all the money they spent like sending off a gold parachute with Bobby Kotick, they could have basically just kept this developer in in the red and funded another hi-fi rush and they didn't and that's so stupid of them that's the problem with that like game is probably never going to be able to be anywhere near enough uh designed in a similar way mm -hmm. yeah it, it, you're, you're not going to get a game like that through like a major publisher for start it's like it's it's a very anti-capitalist like message in the game and no, no publisher is really going to put up with that um even though people are very thirsty for that topic. Um, but like, yeah, there's too much oversight. There's too many people in like positions of power that aren't gamers, that aren't people that know about gaming and game culture that are basically just there to make money and they know how to run a business, but you can't do that for games. And actually I was, I remember watching like a podcast or something talking about uh, like why, why there's so many game studio closures and things like that. And it was essentially, um, it, a lot of it's tied like the interest rate where yeah back when the interest rate was really low companies could basically um like borrow money for relatively nothing and they could take, take a lot of risk but now if there's interest uh if they fuck up and, and have a bad idea and they lose money now they owe you know they they, they it's not a it's not a free loan anymore it's, it's basically um yeah there, there's consequences now so there's so much risk. Oh, hang on. It's Can risk and risk friends? aversion. Yeah, and risk aversion is what's what killing it. Yeah. Happened to the creatures of Baldur's Gate 3. They stopped working with the creatures of D&D &D and Baldur's Gate 4 will be made by a different studio. So it's. Yeah, right. I, I heard Larian basically was just like, yeah, we're not going to work with them anymore. We're not doing Baldur's Gate 4. So, really? Oh, yeah. No, they're not. Apparently, they did not like Hasbro very much. Um. I didn't. I didn't catch the details, but they are the the people who I made the award winning Baldur's Gate three are basically are just like okay, we're done working with these fuckers. Never again. We won't be making oh, Baldur's wow. Gate four. Yeah, which is a ballsy ass thing to say when you when you produce a game that beloved that everybody's just like this is what all games should be, and the and the developers just like you're right, they should be. We'll never make this again. We're done. We're not. We're doing this. Yeah, Hasbro and Blizzard. Yeah, yeah, kind of. Thing is, they've already had their own individual success. They have proved to everyone that they can do it without the support of someone like, you know, uh, Wizards of the Coast. They mm -hmm. don't need WOTC. They don't need that. They've done that with Divinity Original Sin and Original Sin 2. And mm -hmm. now they brought out Baldur's Gate 3. And I feel maybe like now that they've fulfilled that contract to them to Wizards of the Coast they're like okay we're done now let's go independent and just like we know we can do this we've had huge development and input from so many amazing companies we can now make something even better and I think that's what they're gonna do I can see Larian Studios going mm -hmm. in above and beyond Baldur's Gate 3 I think so yeah like it, it'll be curious to what they make next but it'll have to be a brand new IP, which that's a lot of what brought people in. Like people played Baldur's Gate 3 because 
it's a D&D game and it's Baldur's Gate. Like that's it, it's yeah. very easy to transition one fan base over. Now they basically would have to sell it as like their own IP which they couldn't use the 5th edition system. They'd have to like make their own systems of combat which like that saved them some time and effort because they don't have to reinvent combat cuz 5th edition does have its own way of doing combat and they basically just ported it over and then programmed it. Mm. So. Okay, I had no idea that they cut ties. Um Oh yeah. Yeah, that was a big thing with uh when it when it happened. What was that then? Um that's a great question. When when was that? Ba -ba 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 -ba. Because it'd be nice to me to get like the timeline. Um, the IGN article was from March 21st. So just after our last one, it says Larian Studios won't make Baldur's Gate 3 DLC expansions or Baldur's Gate 4. So they are officially out of dev with Hasbro. I'll send you the link. How are we? Uh, Deus, how are we? How are you? Charles. I am doing well. Yeah? I'm doing well. Yeah. I, I just had a bit of food. I've re-energized myself. I'm all good to chat about drama, if you are. Mm -hmm. Any drama to chat about? Uh, I have a little bit of drama. Uh, I have a little bit of personal bit drama, of which I don't want to get into too much. But, Hi, uh, fame. Welcome in. Thank you for the first time chat. How's the day going? Very well. Yes. Very well. We are. Good day. About to get into some tea. Yes. Ask your question. Go ahead. But if it's about promotions, then you're gonna get blocked. I'm just warning you. Yep. <laughs> I'm ready with the button. We both have our own models. We don't need more models, and we don't need new backgrounds or anything else. I have literally got specifically how to. How do you overcome inferiority complex? Hmm. Ooh. That is an extremely heavy question, but I am more than happy to answer it, if I may, Deus. You Fantastic, you go first. Okay, so... <laughs> um, I, myself, suffer with um, a form of inferiority complex. Uh, you have gotten overwhelmed by your inferiority complex and broke down. I'm sorry to hear that. Um, I do hope that you reached out to your friends for support and your support network in real life as well to to support you with that and get the help you need. Um, how to overcome it? It takes a lot of work in terms of personal growth. Identifying that it is it could always be a part of you. You know, you're you're not always going to be the best at everything. Um, we're always going to be, you know, we could always be second place to someone else. And that's not necessarily a bad thing. It's all about coming to grips uh, with being okay with that. And that is the problem for a lot of people is the whole, this is a thing. It's not actually a problem. How do I now live in a way that I believe that it's not a problem? Um, because it's very much our perspective of what we believe that can influence how we live. Mm. Uh, you went from a god complex to an inferiority complex somehow. That can, yeah, like that can be a matter of things that happen in real life, something you saw that day, something someone said. It is, there's a lot. Yeah. Um, but how to overcome it, it literally is going to take, um, I would recommend, hmm, I don't think professional help is the right way to go about it. I think it's more of a case of recognizing it's a part of you and mm -hmm. saying mm -hmm. that it's not, you know, it's not a problem. Only if you let it become a problem will it then be a problem. And yeah. that's when I would say maybe seek some help. But at the moment, if it's not impacting your life negatively, I don't see it being a, 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 a problem that needs to be dealt with. So uh, I, over to you. Sorry. Yeah, but if I can chime in on the topic here, because uh, yeah, I deal with some mental health issues. I actually seek professional help about it. And the way I deal with my depression is I often look at it as a thing that deceives me with the truth. And what I mean by that is 
it will point out my mistakes. It will point out the times I said or did a dumb, stupid thing. And it's right. I, I, I said those things. I did those things. But it filters out all of the good to cast me as the worst version of myself. And the first step of dealing with any problem is noticing it, acknowledging it, and facing it. Knowing that your inferiority complex or your depression or any of your mental health stuff is going to automatically filter for the negative and specifically like t minimize the joy you feel knowing that and being aware like, Oh, Oh, this is happening again. Like I, I, I kind of had a thing recently where I was just like really in a bad spot. I kind of noticed like, wait a minute, I'm doing all these things. Oh, I'm depressed again. Shit. Um, like, being aware, being mindful of yourself and what you're feeling helps you catch those times where the negative, you know, brain grob brain gremlins, brain goblins, whatever we want to call them, um, are, are, are kind of pulling ahead a little bit in the race. And like I said, they're, they're not telling you lies, which is what makes it so hard to refute them sometimes. But that doesn't mean that what they're telling you and, and the conclusion that they're coming to by asserting those truths are correct. They, they are deceiving you with truths rather than, you know, outright lying. So recognize that this is happening and that since they are focusing on the negative, try and focus on the positives and it takes work. It takes effort to notice these things. And there are small things you can do. Like I remember people keeping like gratitude journals and things like that. Like there are tools you can learn to fight this, but generally speaking, like a lot of people have imposter syndrome and it's, it's not uncommon. It's surprisingly normal and you're going to be okay. You just got to deal with it. Yeah. So, um, if I may, um, Evie said, the, they were living with a god complex when they were younger and now they have no idea how they were like that as a kid um, and my two cents was a case that you know as kids we often are ignorant of things in the larger picture and that comes from you know how uh, they were raised or from societal effects around your school environs but that that god complex is, is in so many children but that we allow that to be there because we as adults you know as parents and things we live in the real world so much that we allow our children to enjoy being ignorant because we know what's coming for them we know mm. what is going to be further down the line the stresses that they're going to have so we just allow them to you know we allow them to enjoy their life when they're young because not it's not always going to be that way yeah also who just wants to tear down a kid and be like Oh, you think you're shit? You ain't shit for shit, kid. Get your head out of your yeah. ass. Like, there are times when parents will do that when like somebody gets way too far out of line. But otherwise, like, nah, you gotta you gotta be kind to the kids where you can because life won't be. Uh, I'm gonna read Evie's next thing here. Not gonna lie, I watch Sander Sides to deal with my negative emotions because hey, it's a cute series and it helps me understand my negative thoughts. Yeah, yeah, whatever works for you. Like. Part of growing up is like figuring out your own ways to deal with uh, your pos your good times and your bad. So, in fact, I hope that um, helps in some way. Um, you know, if if you do are finding that it's too much at the moment, then obviously seek professional help, um, as we say. Um, I will see about maybe leaving some links in the um, in the in the VOD description when this goes up on YouTube as well, if I can find some. Um, but they'll definitely be tied to the country that I'm in. So you're, it's all about looking and researching yourself or your, the country you're in for the help. Yeah. Yeah. That was, that was an interesting segue, wasn't it? Mm-hmm. I'm glad we got to discuss that, though, because... Yeah. It's nice to have someone to talk these deep things with someone there with their opinion because when I do it on Court Weekly, it's just me and chat. Mm -hmm. And sometimes you get very bored of your own voice. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Speaking of inferiority complex, I get very tired very quickly of having to hear myself talk because um, I talk a lot anyway. 
But uh, yeah, it's nice to have someone else here. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, Thank you for being here. You're welcome. So I had two other major uh, topics to get into. Uh, one about commissions and one about viewer etiquette. Got things. Viewer can... etiquette? Let's get into that. What have you got? So I wrote that down because a while back, a couple weeks, there was a, a post that blew up because some somebody that w Daddy hopped into a person's. Told me. Sorry, I had to. I'm so sorry that I just somebody once told me you. I'm. <laughs> no, that's fine. I'm going to sit here um, and uh, be bad. But, uh, but some streamer was in another streamer's chat as a viewer and basically used somebody else's emotes. And the stream that they were watching, that person got upset at them for using someone else's emotes in their stream, in their chat. And... I saw this. It wasn't even that they got upset. It was that if you do it again, we're going to ban you. I mean, I would call that getting that's... upset, but yeah, yeah, that's like yeah, they're... that's so extreme. Yeah, and then just just the the idea that's that's for somehow some people's rooms, like you're not supposed to use other people's stuff in there. And I can get a little bit of, I can understand a little bit of the territoriality around that, but at the same time, the fucking platform is built this way. Make your peace with that. People are going to use someone else's emotes in your room. Deal with it. Like, if they're do using offensive ones, that's fine. Get upset at them for that. But, like, if you're trying to control what people do in your room and prevent them from using somebody else's emotes, either do that on the back end as you, the streamer, and, like, restrict people from being able to do that, or make your peace and let them do it, because acting out like this just pisses people off and makes you look bad. Don't do that. Yes. Yes. Um, exactly. Yeah, we're on the, we're on the same page with that one, but that that is the thing that was just kind of like oh, that's, that's sort of interesting. But another thing that came up is um, uh, so I was having a conversation with somebody about ad breaks, uh, specifically on Twitch, and they were saying like they were oh. trying to figure out like how they're doing ad breaks and what do they do. Like, are pre rolls good or pre rolls bad? I'm like, well, you know, as a viewer, I hate pre rolls, and this is why. Um, and as a streamer, you know, here's how I build my thing to try and minimize pre-rolls for people um, but when I was talking yes. about using it as a viewer I said I usually don't see them because I use an ad block and I wasn't seeing them for a very 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 long time because of the ad block and I mm -hmm. only recently had to deal with them again because Twitch figured out how to break ad block and I couldn't get around it so I basically paid them their money to take away ads on the entire side I got like Twitch Turbo whatever the hell it's called um, mm. and somebody replied to that and they're like, it's never okay to use ad block in a person's stream. Blah, 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 blah. I'm like, I don't owe you anything. Like, mm. I don't know you. Like, it, uh, speaking just for my streams, anytime anyone is in my stream doing anything, it is supporting me. Like, if mm -hmm. they're subscribe, if they're, if they're supporting me financially through a subscription, bits, a donation, you know, if I ever actually get merch going... Uh, you know, you're financially supporting me. Hey, hydration. Thank you. Hydrate, redeem. <laughs> I see it. I see it. Um, stretch and stretch, too. Um, but basically, like, if you're in my stream and you are, you know, financially supporting me, you're helping. If you're there and you have ads on and you're watching the ads, you're helping. Uh, if you have ads turned off through an ad blocker and you're there chatting, that helps because it helps to not be there during a silent stream for several hours. Even if you're yeah. there lurking, I'm going to be like, well, that was kind of a quiet stream, and I don't know if I should keep playing that game. And I'm going to go look at my metrics later and be like, oh, the average viewership was seven? They weren't talking, yeah. but holy shit, there was seven people there? That's great. Like, everything you do in I'm my chat good. room is helping me in one way, shape, or another. You don't need to spend money if you don't want to. It is my job as the streamer to convince you to spend money. It is my job as the streamer to convince you to purchase merch or to give donations or spend money on bits or thing, you know, what have you. That is my job. And it is not my job to guilt you into turning features off that you might turn on for a reason. I have ad block turned on in part because ads are annoying and in part because there was a period in my life where I was going around to like normal websites, like web comics, and some of them had the most atrocious ads that the page would load and it would jump me to a pop-up window and take me to another site and yeah. try and download and install something. And it is yeah. a it is a safety and security measure. And I don't turn it off That's for Twitch because 
they're fucking annoying on Twitch. Like I remember a time when I had that turned off. I had Twitch whitelisted. And what was happening was like I would come onto Twitch and I would open up a bunch of streams, like you know, four, five, six streams. I don't know who I want who I want to watch that day. And I go to the first one, I watch the full ad. Okay. I watch a little bit of the stream. Not really enjoying the vibe. I'm gonna go to the next stream. So I close that tab and go to the next one. Same ad plays again. All right, fine, I'll sit through it this time. And I watch the stream, but I'm kind of in a bad mood now, so not feeling the vibe. I go to the next tab that I opened earlier. The same ad plays again. The third time I'm seeing the yeah. same advertisement in like 10 minutes. And I just close it immediately. And I go to the fourth tab, and the same freaking ad same plays ad. again. Yeah. And it's, it's the ad situation yeah. on Twitch is so bad. It's not good. It is. And yeah. that's kind of part of the reason I, I build my ads the way that I do because I don't want people to get pre-rolls. Like it's annoying to have three minutes of ads for every hour, but I try and build them in a way that avoids affecting people too much. And I also try like when I'm getting close to like a boss fight or something and I'm, if I'm paying attention, I'm like, oh, wait a minute. Ads are going to start in like 10 minutes. Let me do an ad break now and then I'll come back later. You know, I'm going to go get a snack while the ad break's running, and I'll come back, and then we'll get through this next boss fight without an ad break interrupting us. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, I don't have any problem with someone using ad block on, well, anywhere, really. Um, yeah. Uh, same for emotes from other people's channels. That That's fine with me as well. Mm -hmm. I always, like, read the... Like I hover my mouse over the emote. Yeah, to see what like, they see what they call oh, it. Oh, yeah. it's a, a wave emote or something like that because sometimes it's hard to tell. Yeah. Um, you know, they're a tiny little image on a screen. It'll be hard to see. Um, but yeah, like the, was, these are just two things nice. that came up in the last like month that I saw people having opinions about it that I'm like, this is gonna be a good topic to chat about with Dan because like. I think we're both on the same page. Like emotes are fine. Use whatever emotes you want in either of our streams. Uh, ad block is fine. Like if you're showing up and chatting, you're keeping us company. God, that helps so much. Like we both had times where just there are streams when people didn't show up and you're just there alone. And that's not a great feeling. And you know, mm -hmm. even being there but, chatting but, 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 but. is great. I wanna, I wanna and if you're lurking, that's there. great too. Yeah. If even if you have a stream where you're literally just talking to yourself for the entire like three and a half hours or something, the fact that you put in the effort to talk for those three and a half hours means that you want to be doing this mm -hmm. because there are those who will, you know, want to be here for all the wrong reasons and be in it for money and fame and everything. Mm -hmm. But then if they've got no one in chat, they're just silent. Yeah. And you're like, yeah, you could have lurkers right now listening to you and you're just, you're just not. Not doing anything. I, yeah. It's not, it's not, a, I also want to touch on what you said as well. I don't view it as a job because I'm, um, for myself and, and some others, we're not doing it for the money. We're doing it for the, you know, entertainment factor. It's, mm -hmm. it's bringing joy to other lives i know you understand that but i just wanted to to touch on that a bit yeah um, but um yeah guys the streamers that are so that dictate so heavily and are like no emotes from anyone else or no ad block like, just don't watch them yeah that's that's really the best you can do is like this this industry thrives on people paying attention to you if somebody's doing a thing you don't like mute them block them and move on it will have a far greater effect than you feeding into them and challenging them on it because challenging them will just give them something to like make content off of and build their ego off of and here's this person that like nothing speaks louder than just watching their numbers slowly go down as they become a bigger and bigger dick yeah yeah uh i don't understand the people that crave fame like that i am socially awkward as hell fair enough like i'm I think people like the trappings of fame. Like they like the money, they like the power, they like the influence. Everybody has that person they look up to. And probably there's some people that these people know that like, I want to be like so-and-so, but they don't know how to get there. They don't know how to like build a community or an environment that will get them what they need. And we had that as well. Mm -hmm. Like both of us. 
I know for a fact we both have people we look up to in the streaming community and go, wow, they are doing amazing. Um, they're such high quality in what they do. Mm-hmm. I wish I could be that. Um, and that kind of does touch on the inferiority complex again. Um, but it's a case of uh, taking... Actually, I saw something that um, is quite important to this. Someone said that you should take advantage of your of your jealousy and use Ooh. that to be more productive in your projects. Thank you, Harp, for the unga bunga. God bless you with good fortune. <laughs> Unga Bunga, God bless you back, Frando. Thank you so much, Harp. Unga Bunga, you back, yes. But I like that. Take advantage of your jealousy. I, I've heard a similar quote, though my version of it I heard was, work hard until your heroes become your rivals. Oh. Harp, oh, you are so sweet. You're most welcome. Uh, you struggle talking to new people, Evie, but when you are uncomfortable in an online space, you can be very talkative. Or when you are comfortable, sorry, when you mm. are comfortable in an online space. I think a lot of us feel yeah. that way, Evie. Like, I'm that's, I'm generally a fairly reserved generally person. Generally us. And, yeah, yeah was, as soon as we're comfortable, we'll just shout somebody's ear off. Yeah. And being comfortable in a space or around someone can vary. There are people that I have met that I have been comfortable with them immediately. And then there are other people I've had to take time to warm up to. So. M- me. <laughs> <laughs> I remember our po- like our first conversation after our first Dan and Dan chat was literally me going like, I hope everything was okay. If I like <laughs> overstepped anything, please be understanding. I'm so sorry. And you, you were just like, no, it, you're fine. It's all good. Yeah. And I just, yeah. Oh dear. Mm. And now look at us. Look at how much we've talked about already. Yeah. And, and I had to tell when. That when a question of the day on the server interests me, you info dump. But that's good. Like, it's not info dumping. You're wanting to answer the question. Like, you're still in control of how much you give. You're not dumping info. You are expressing yourself. And that's nice. Because it encourages others to do the same. Oh. Sorry. Harp says, to clarify, I've got a stream say Unga Bunga and wish good fortune to perform like yourself and... You, my dear friends, are the 1,156 streamer I've unga bungered. So I truly hope your stream and day goes mainly well. Wow! Thank you, Harp. You uh, must, like, people must forget you. Like, obviously, the, the lot goes in the day. But I am not going to forget this. I'm writing this down right now. <laughs> it's going in my book. I'm going to remember the, the unga bunga. The underscore Harp. Bunga, bunga, happiness, friend. Also, I said it in text, but yeah, 1,156 unga bungas is impressive. There, I've written you down in my diary. I will not forget <laughs> you. I will, I will, if you're on Twitter or anything, please let me know what your at is. I will happily at you and do a giant thank you to you because going at 1,156 different streams, um, and you don't even do it to be remembered. I know you, you don't do it to be remembered. You do it because you want to make people's days better. And that's... <clears throat> my throat is going. That's... Uh, you know, it just shows that you're a very kind person. I think so... we're in sync because my throat went out at the same time. <laughs> <laughs> so thank you, Harp, for making people's days better. Thank you. Uh, in a way, you're like us. Trying to make everyone's days better. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, so, last topic I had topic? was about commissions. Okay. In what way? So, uh, the commission platform VGen recently just announced some changes oh. to how they do VGen. commissions. Have you used the platform before? Uh, I, I'm so sorry. I died. I'm Don't do that. Um, <laughs> uh, I don't know what that noise was. I think it was a hiccup combined with something else. Mm. Uh, I have been on VGen. Um, I've noticed a lot of artists strive to be on VGen because mm. 
of how uh, kinder it is in terms of payments. Yeah. PayPal takes a cut. VGen doesn't take as big of a cut. Um, also, VGen was kind of built with artist protections in mind, whereas in PayPal, yeah. like we had stories a while ago where like People's there was. Well, people's names being leaked or people getting people finishing a commission and getting a charge back months later with somebody claiming that the commission wasn't done. And PayPal's like, yeah, sure, we'll take the money. We'll, we'll, we'll do it yeah. with, without uh, without question. So VGen has a lot of artist protections, and that's why a lot of artists push for it. Um, but turns out what had happened is VGen, because it had kept scaling up and adding more and more people, eventually it did let in a, a couple of bad eggs as well as a couple of people that just didn't manage their time right. And there were people that needed that, that had a ton of commissions backed up and weren't getting them done in time, and were still taking new ones. And Vigen had to update its rules um, on how on how commissions worked, where essentially they weren't going to let anybody's commission go for like two years anymore without a response. Mm. Um, so the the new system they implemented is essentially you must have a date for when the commission is going to be done and it must be within two years is what they ultimately decided originally they said like five months and then people were pushing back like well i do you know music or i do music videos or i do vita remodels i can't get it done in five months and they're like okay fine we'll push it back to two years but at least every five months you have to deliver something as part of it maybe it's a sketch maybe it's a you know i uh, got screwed up by paypal too yeah yeah PayPal's, PayPal's known for being kind of a dick. Um, so that was kind of a big part of the reason why VGen got got as big as it did. Um, plus, it's just like, it's hard to find commission services around elsewhere. Like VGen, with them gating who gets in, it gets rid of a lot of the chaff. It gets rid of a lot of the people that just are, are frauds oh. or trying to scam people. <laughs> bots, yeah, um, they, they, they do vet people fairly well. But um, yeah. the, but they put these changes in, and some people were upset by them because one of the things they put in was also um, the if you're not using PayPal on VGen, uh, it automatically goes through Stripe, which they were adding in a thing where you don't get the entire payment, like the payment's held until the delivery is done. Um, mm. So essentially, like if if you want if you're doing like emergency commissions and you need the money now, you have to have people pay with PayPal, or you have to get the commissions out. That was in part just because people were were had way too many commissions and, and they they didn't they, they weren't managing their time properly. Um, yes. And they also basically put it in so that if you had more than three overdue commissions, you were essentially put in a a negative status where you would not get displayed on the front page, you would not get advertised, you could not take any new commissions until you finished all of what your outstanding commissions were. The problem is they basically flipped that switch overnight without really giving people a lot of time to react. And that pissed a lot of people off. Wow. But broadly speaking, the changes are good. Um, Cause it's, it's basically PayPal is too toxic to, to commission to people that are offering yeah. commissions. Whereas VGen was starting to get a little bit too toxic towards people that were uh, requesting commissions. So. Oh, there's an ad. But. Yeah, so those were big changes in, in the VTubing space, and people were talking about that a lot for a couple of days. Uh, it seems to have mostly uh, mostly evened out after that. I don't really see people talking about it much anymore. Because um, once they got it done and taken care of, it's it's mostly fine. Um, but just the, the confusion around the transition, that was very sudden and abrupt, and they didn't do a great job of communicating it. Because they didn't do it through like the primary VGen like, Twitter page. It was like the creator did it on like their personal like account oh okay which not great but people found it and that's how i like know all of this because i saw them talking about it yeah but yeah but yeah, did you put a lot of income uh, a lot of commissions in for stuff because i know i saw a couple of them where like i think you were doing one for like hades hades 2 like style of like retro roman <laughs> design i think i saw you like tweet out about yes. that yeah yes okay. that got finished recently um nice i've actually had more conversation with ink the uh the artist uh ink has said that they're um they're gonna do a little bit or they're gonna finish their queue and then they're gonna work on some personal projects including my own so um 
Nice. Yeah, we'll get more expressions. Um, more maybe maybe a toggle. I don't know. We're in talks about Ooh. you know when you go into fights, maybe maybe there's a toggle for something appearing or not. Um, definitely talking about getting a flirty toggle. <laughs> so like maybe the shoulder, the, the the garb shoulder slips a little bit. Um, ah. Or like more abs are shown or something like that. Just something more um, revealing and sexy for that model. Mm. For when I'm talking to like the really hot and really attractive characters um, of the first game. That's what I'm going to be using that model for. Was, was when I uh, when I do my playthrough of that game, uh, which will be coming to the channel soon. Oh, nice! So it, it won't be this month. Uh, it I can I might as well just say it. it will be the end of June. Ah, um, and I will say that again tomorrow at Court Weekly. Now that I've said it. Mm. Writing that down. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm going to have to figure out some new games for my channel too because I did beat uh, Cosmic Wheel Sisterhood on my end. Yeah, you did. What's coming next then? Um, So Hades 2 had been the tentative idea and then I just kind of powered through that. So unless I'm doing another, uh, another file for Hades 2... <laughs> Uh, I'm probably going to be jumping into a new game that is coming out actually this this week and I even have a short video from when I played the demo uh, gonna be going up to Twitter and socials later in the week but it is duck detective what was it what, what's the subtext on this I want to get this right duck detective the secret salami it is oh. a point-and-click mystery game with essentially like cute Sanrio characters but it's like a mystery noir thing, but it's silly and it's great. And the demo is fantastic. So it's, it's, it, it'll be a fun little thing to play, uh, but it's, it's releasing on Thursday, I think. So, but that's going to be probably replacing uh, Cosmic Wheel on Saturday. And I'm going to go back to Zelda again, starting next week. And then Tuesdays will remain my day to try and get better at just chatting because I still want to improve with that. So. Oh. I I think it has been lovely to see your number of streams increase. Mm -hmm. um, I was wondering if I could ask actually and get your opinion on how you feel that that's going, having that that Tuesday slot or that that one stream during the week. And then your weekend slots. How are you finding that? Uh, so when I first started, I did do like weeknight streams. I was actually predominantly like Monday, Wednesday, Friday. It was what I did. Um, mm -hmm. So it's it's a bit much. Like one of the ones I did for Tuesday was like a, another like adulting scheduling stream. And I like I put together my plan for the month of May. Uh, I, I put together stuff for like the week I was in. And I also kind of sat down there and I'm like, let me do a, a thing I like to do sometimes where I brought out a spreadsheet and I actually marked out like, okay, this is my day when I'm from like when I'm awake until when I should be going to sleep. And like, what am I doing for like every half hour segment? And when I sat down and map, a lot to dictate though, isn't it? It is, but I'm a very visual person. So like actually putting it on a space where I can look at it and go like, yeah, I'm at work between these hours. I'm taking lunch between these between this hours, these hours. I'm gonna have to have right. dinner around this time. It can it can make it easier to look at it and go, this is all I'm trying to do with my day and my life. No wonder I'm so tired because this is just stuffed. There's there's not a lot of room for other things. Um, yeah. So it's it's been a challenge to fit an extra day in. Because there are streamers I like to watch. There are streamers I like to hang out and 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 watch their content. You now, uh, my mm. friend uh, Starblight Malice is a great example. I try and jump for as many of her streams as I can because I want to support her. But yeah, that also means I'm not streaming those <laughs> nights. Um, yeah, yeah, I know that feeling. So um, I don't think I'm going to be adding too many other weeknight streams for the time being because the only other day I could add that doesn't have a conflict is like Friday nights and like. I want my Friday nights. 
Uh, even on yeah. the, even on like the schedule I made, Friday night was blocked off as a it's the end of the week and I'm taking a night and this one's mine. So yeah, um, you know, th- that is explicitly downtime. So means that he ain't going. But I stream Friday night. <laughs> no, uh, I mean, it's, every everybody has their own schedule. Everybody has stuff that works. I used to stream on Friday nights and, and it's fine. Like honestly, I I miss the days when I used to weirdly enough. When I used to stream on Monday nights, because I used to stream a game I really, really liked on Monday nights, and every Monday I would like pop out of bed in the morning, like it's Monday, I get to stream that game today, ha <laughs> ha! Like I loved it, it was great. I want to get back to that what feeling. What game was it? Uh, that was Triangle Strategy. It's a tactic <gasps> style game. Oh, I have it. I haven't played it yet. Play it, play it, play it. It's so good. Uh, let me check if it's in my stream list on Steam, please. I've got file folders on Steam mm-hmm. of like what I'm currently streaming, what I want to stream. My to stream folder has 71 games in it. Uh, <laughs> uh, yeah, my uh, my streaming games folder has my 59. <laughs> so I feel you. Yeah, my non no, my, my non stream play is 117. I did manage to get through some of those when um, I got back from holiday last week and I was ill. I uh, mm-hmm. got some of those done. But yeah, Triangle Strategy is something I do want to eventually stream. So I have to wait, I'm afraid. But I will play it and I will, we'll have a nice long chat about it when I do. Oh, I'm looking forward to that because that is that is a <laughs> juicy game. That is a, there's a lot involved in that. And it's it's worth playing the first run through blind, and then like for, for like new game plus because it does have that uh, being like okay now let me break out a strategy guide and figure out what the heck I'm supposed to do to do certain things and you know, recruit certain characters and do this and do that and what what are the secrets? It's so good. Mm. So it's it's a very good yeah. game, very very good game. I will take that on board actually. Yeah. Um, but no, no, uh, Duck Detective is probably my next one because. Um, a, I want to like try and do more games that are like fashionable. Like that's kind of why I picked up Hades too when I did. Like it just came out. I see a lot of people playing it. I want to play it and join in on the conversation. And you know, while I do like to do streaming from like a cozy perspective, I also do try and treat it like a business. And sometimes you got to make the smart business decision. So yeah. While Duck Detective is not what I'm assuming is going to be a groundbreaking game for my channel um it is a thing that is going to be brand new it's going to be just out and it's going to be something people can watch and hang out with and i can tell you right now from the demo i'm going to be hyping that thing up it is a noir detective game dan dan they have deductions d-e-u-c-k deductions in a detective game where you play as a duck oh, character. It's terrible what was puns. The game duck, duck, Tales, so. duck Detective The Secret Salami. I will send you the link to the theme page. Uh, I've got it. Two hours oh, very interesting. Yeah, it's got like that, like, like well. Sanrio style. It's got like. It, ha- it does have voice what? acting in it. Like, it's so good. The demo is so good. Comes out in four days. Yes. <gasps> wow. Okay. I'm going to dump that name in both of our chats. Did you touch the demo then? Yes, I did. The demo is good. It's very short, but it, it does take you through like the first couple of rooms and like lets you get a feel for some of the mechanics and systems. So, but it's so fun. It's so fun. And it's so silly and stupid. You know what I've been contemplating? Going mm-hmm. off of the tangent, is getting a, a Steam Deck. Mm. Because there are a few times when I would just love to be in bed while playing video games, and I can do that with the Switch. But there are, um, as I said, a more than a hundred games on my Steam profile that mm-hmm. I obviously can't port over to Switch. 
So, um, I don't know, maybe I'm going to cave someday soon and just buy a Steam Deck and then all of these games that I've, I've just sat here. Because <laughs> seeing for long periods at the moment, um, yes. it's quite painful for me because of the condition I have. Mm. Um, but uh, that I don't want to get into too much detail about. Fair enough. Um, you know, it, there are aspects of my personal life I keep private uh from lovely chat i mean if this was just a call with the two of us i'd tell you about it um fair enough fair enough because but uh you know i thought um, about getting a steam deck before myself just for me it's just like i already have the switch i already have a few games on that and honestly i just prefer the big mm -hmm. tv anyways there's very few things i would play on the steam deck that i wouldn't want to be like no i want to go over here to the that i wouldn't want to just go and play it on the pc like most of it, like Hades 2 would be great if I could play it on the Steam Deck. I think, actually, is it Steam Deck certified right now? I don't, it might be. I don't know. Uh, works with your Xbox controller. Does it have, is it certified for the Steam Deck? I would be surprised if it was. It has, I don't think it's been tested yet. Uh, never mind. Still page. Oh, Steam Deck compatibility yeah. verified. Yes. Where did you see that? Uh, oh, looking... yeah, there it is. Yeah. Nice. It... So, yeah, that would be a good one. Just my, my concern is, like, with um, with a lot of game con uh, game consoles and stuff, like, a lot of, like, the sticks and stuff will just wear out. And, like... There are 15 verified supported languages for Hades 2. Now, that that is support and commitment from a studio and that's early access language support they're not done adding stuff i'm sure it's amazing yeah ah oh, super giant why are you so amazing hey I, I said it to other people last week during my stream for it uh super giant games is the reason i started collecting video game vinyl i collected uh their transistor soundtrack on vinyl they had like a milky Transist white. I was literally about to say Transistor is the game that brought me over to Supergiant Games, and that's what caught my eye. Mm -hmm. And that's how I've been in love with Supergiant ever since. I don't love all of their stuff. Pyre did not really catch me. Uh, I like the music. I, I did. Pyre. I did get the album for it. Um, but uh, Bastion was the one that that really caught my love and affection. And basically, the album. I, I loved Bastion so much. Transistor was a day one purchase for both the album and the game. I ended up not liking some aspects of the game, so I was a little bit uh, tepid on on their games following afterwards. Just like to be a little bit more clear about, like, am I gonna like this or not? Because uh, Pyre is mm. one that I picked up, and I'm like, yeah, I'm not really liking the gameplay, but the music's great. Um, but yeah, Hades two. Hades 2 is what ha is is basically makes look, Hades 1 look like a prototype for the game they might have been trying to build the whole time. It's great. Mm. Um, we're back to Hades talk again. <laughs> yes. What uh, is next on our discussion list? Uh, so the VGM changes were kind of the final thing on my on my list. Like, oh, okay. So we've been going for about uh, an hour and forty five minutes. We'll see. Is there anything on my mind? Hmm. I don't think so, really. Um, mm. No, no, nothing, nothing comes to mind. Yeah, like there's always drama going on. There's always tea happening in the community, but nothing like what we had at the beginning of the year. Oh, um, yeah. yeah. Um, yeah. So the start yeah. of the year was ridiculous, wasn't it? Yeah. Um, I did have one funny thing that happened with like a company because like being an ind independent streamer, a big part of why I'm this instead of like trying to get into a corpo thing is uh, I've worked jobs before that were like bad jobs, bad managers, like good opportunities, but bad managers. And um, there was actually one uh, one VTuber studio that like I, I saw like a tweet about it or like they're talking about like recruiting a new generation. I looked them up. Holy shit, Dan. They had so many talent on their, like, one, like, on, like, a Wikipedia page. 
so many talent that quit like two months in. Like they got hired, they got an avatar, and they left two months later. And they're like, ooh, it ain't just one. It's like several people. There was like an entire generation of their talent that um, that was like they had seven people in that generation. Five of them are gone now. There's only two left. I see your mouth moving in from your avatar, but I can't hear you anymore. Oh, I'm not. I'm sorry. I wasn't saying anything. I think that was my fan ah, okay. being caught on my model. Oh, okay. Sorry. Um, but yeah, no, it was kind I'm of. I, I don't even remember the name of the place because they basically like saw the uh, saw the 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 churn for talent in the agency and how many people just came and left basically immediately, like. Oh. Like they're there and gone in two months. Like that's insane. Like, and I saw like at least three talent that I think all did that. I'm like, ooh, three people, three people. That's a bit much. That is a lot of people. Yeah, so I'm just like, okay, this place isn't isn't gonna be super reliable. Um, I do know that there's supposed oh. to be a new uh, VTubing agency opening up in like a week or two. Um, really? I, yeah, it's um. How how, how did they how did they describe it? Uh, so it's going to be uh, an all-female agency focused on... Um, yes. That's not in a derogative way, but that's... No, like, no, 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 no. That's most... That is most studios these days, is that it is very much an area of streaming well, that is heavily female um, or uh, populated, yeah. which is good. Yeah, so um, I, but, I, uh, but apparently the, the genre they're going for is... Uh, more adult themed and it's going to be focusing on people that are like work in the audio industry or, or have experience with like audio content um i'll give you some i'll leave it to your imagination what are uh, they gonna do not safe for work asmr basically uh, that's kind of that's stuff. basically because... the, the people the person founding it is it has that background yes um but it was it was right. a thing i'm keeping an eye on because the person who founded it came into an agency and was there very briefly Ooh. and left Evie has a question sorry to interrupt you Deus. sure but it does tie on to what you're saying is uh, that why do most features that work with a company have a model that appears to be just an anime character in an anime character style um, um i'll start this one off since you started off the last question uh mostly because the company just gives it to you like when you apply like a couple places i've i've, I've heard people talk about the the application process like the model's done you're applying for the role so like they they have a look that they want to have with like a generation of models and you're basically applying for a role and seeing whether or not they'll hire you for that position so um it's really just branding and in in like the boring corporate stuff of just like they think they think this model will sell well and are you a good enough entertainer to fill, fit in the role yes more or um, less i agree the only thing I had to add would be with the popularity of anime. That too, why yeah. wouldn't they go for an anime character style? Because, you know, if you're watching someone who's an anime character, then play games or just chatting or hand cam or whatever, then yeah. Yeah, like I've, I've seen some truly inventive VTubers. I actually found one this week that's a Mermoose. I didn't even realize that. I thought it was actually like a a thing for mermaid like people doing mermaid oh. art for may no it's just a somebody whose vtuber is always a mermaid from the bottom and a moose from the top that's their entire thing oh. but corporate companies are there to make money and they will they will make the cute kawaii or the sexy as much as they can because it will sell yeah yeah grew up on fluttershy um, plays and sylveon reacts so i get that yeah don't know those two. I'm Fluttershy is My Little Pony. Sylveon is Pokemon. But I don't know Sylveon reacts specifically. No, I don't know Sylveon reacts to Sylveon. I, I knew it was Pokemon. I didn't know Fluttershy was My Little Pony, actually. Yes. Mm -hmm. um, what I would say is... Um, <laughs> I'm going to say this. I actually looked at uh, possibly a, a auditioning for an agency that was looking for an all-male group. Mm. Um, but Deus is completely right. When I looked into the the specs, 
it was literally that they've got the model, they've got the name, they've got the... They even listed, like, which personality do you most fit into out of these four. Yep. <clears throat> and when that happened, when I saw that, I was like, there's no freedom here. This is a trap. Yeah, uh, it's, so I it's a very it. small sandbox, and they, they kind of stick you in the box and expect you to make money with them. So, yeah, you know, if, if that's something you're interested in, and honestly, like a lot of people that go into those, like it is a huge breakout moment for some people. And like, mm. even if they leave the job a couple years later and come back to their original, like persona that they built, um, mm. they can bring that audience back. And the people that knew them from their job previously, like will follow them. Like Doki bird is a great example of that. Like people yeah. like she, she had a reasonable following before, and then it exploded in the last like three months because yes. of of who she was working with the company. Like if she'd never taken that job, she would not have hit the marks that she's at now. Now. Mm. And that's Agreed. that's kind of why people like even if it's a bad contract with the company, like they'll take the job because they know it's worth it. Like it's it it does pay out in the end usually. Uh at least as a, yeah. uh, as a risk uh, risk reward. But uh, going back to that other company that I said was uh, going to be starting in like a couple weeks. Um, yeah, the the person that is starting it up took a job in in a smaller agency. They they didn't get along with the management, and I get the impression that they're kind of starting up the agency, kind of just to give the middle finger to their old boss and be like, no, I was at I wasn't just. I wasn't a bad employee. I was a great employee and you were a bad boss and I'm going to be a better boss than you. And it's, it's a lot of like spite powering it. Yeah. So, but they're also just kind of like leaning into what they know. So they're getting people that already are involved in that type of content. They don't want to be somebody's like first foray into that content. So they're looking for people that were already in it, that were already in, that are interested in doing that and kind of like focusing on that, which is also unfortunate because right around now I've been seeing people talk about like, a lot more crackdown against NSFW content in general, including that type of content. Uh, so this might not be the most fortuitous time to start in that area, but we'll see how it goes. I'm just kind of part of me is watching that shade and Freud the, to be like, this is either going to be really good and they're going to validate their opinion of themselves by performing well as, as a manager, or this is going to be really bad. And they're going to show exactly why they were a bad employee and they're going to be a bad manager. And it's just, it's just going to fall apart. And I don't know. Mm. It's hard to say. Mm -hmm. Sorry, I was eating something. Um, yeah, agencies can either be amazing, like Hollow Live, mm -hmm. or burn very quickly. Uh, yeah. <clears throat> Nizi. <clears throat> um, yeah. I still like that that comment I saw people say online of they could have been any color, but they chose black, and that's yes. that was a great dig against them. It was. But. So silly what they did. <gasps> Thank you, Windows, for going boo -boo -boo during my stream. <laughs> Fucking assholes. Yeah. <laughs> but, yeah, that's about all we have. So, like, there's there's, there's some stuff coming out. Uh, hopefully, next time I'll, get, I'll be able to let you know a little bit more about that agency and whether or not it did well or if it crashed and burned. Uh, it's a coin flip for me. It's, I don't know what's going to happen. And that's kind of why I'm. I'm like keeping my eye on it. They finally did like a model re reveal of the models. I'm like, eh. I'm not, I'm not enthused. After a while, you've just kind of seen cute anime girls a billion times. So, I'm, I don't know what I'm looking for in in, in models anymore. So, yeah. But it's worth keeping an eye out but um so yeah we we are i think we've talked about everything we've, we've got here uh do you have anything coming up that's new or interesting or fun or cool uh new interesting or fun uh, brains 404 ain't it dan <laughs> uh, it's been just just affiliate celebration at the end of june oh nice uh Tea Party August main debut September. That's that's literally all that I've got going on. Hmm. Um, July's thing has had to be postponed to November. So. Hmm. 
just to give myself and my viewers as well a break. Too much too quick and really affects people. Yeah, so. fatigue everybody left and right. Yeah, and so. I want to avoid that as best I can. Yeah. <laughs> Um, as for myself, as I mentioned, Duck Detective is going to probably be starting this coming weekend. And I'm looking forward to that. I don't think it's going to be super long. It's going to be kind of a fun short game. But I've got a couple of other, like, indie games I want to check out and play. I don't know what, like, the next big one's going to be. I'm trying to, like, not go all in on that. Because, like, whenever I have plans, last year was a great example of, like, I have such plans. And then a good game comes along and just sweeps the legs. And I'm like, plans are going to change. So. Yep, plans have changed. We're now playing this instead. Yes, we are. Yeah. We are now a 100% Baldur's Gate stream. I've seen people do that, and that's just like, yeah, that's gonna happen. I, I'm definitely still gonna remain variety in everything I do. Yeah, I like doing that. It's nice to be able to do something different and change it up. But uh, other than that, I'm actually been debating a uh, a model rework and a redo. Uh, for a Gen 3 Ooh. coming up. I have not contacted anybody. I have a person in mind. I just have to, like, work on my uh, my commission pitch for them to, like, get the... Uh, what, is, what is it called? Uh, the character design done. But, like, I'm going to try and get the character design done, get a reference sheet, and that all, that person also does model work. So I might mm. be able to get, like, the live 2D from them as well, which will make it easier, too. <gasps> You so, going live 2D? I mean, I'm already live yes. 2D in this form. I'm just pixely. Yeah. But, yeah, I, I have an idea. I was kind of, like, brainstorming it a bit this month. Um, I know, like, the rough colors and, and the rough design that I want to use. It's just a matter of bringing that concept to somebody and being like, you think this is good? What do you think we should change? What do you recommend altering or doing differently? Um, you know, yeah. With... with this idea but i'm i'm kind of spitballing it like in the last week or two with some friends and they really liked my like raw concept for the design um and i i have some ideas i've been spitballing of like you know i could ask them to do this and i could get like toggles for that and ooh. so um yeah if if i get what i'm think what i'm hoping to get it's going to be pretty awesome, but it's going to be a few months, more than a few months out, probably later, mm -hmm. later this year, early next year. But um, yeah, that's it's a thing that's been on my mind lately. If you aren't already following this, now is your chance to quickly drop a follow. Hit that heart. Yeah. Right there at the top of the chat. It's just some love his way. But yeah, I usually do three streams a week. I do... Uh, I'm doing Zelda Link to the Past on Sundays. Normally these days... These, uh, blah, 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 blah. Nowadays I'm doing Legend of Zelda a Link to the Past on Sundays. Uh, the Saturday game is going to be changed to Duck Detective. And then Tuesdays are usually like a Just Chatting or like a, a Finland Day or something fun and interesting. So. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I did one this month on uh, social media management. And like, here's how to use Twitter and make Twitter not suck. As like... A viewer. Hey, I had somebody that in that stream that was like, I didn't know you could do some of these things. I'm like, great. I'm glad I taught somebody things. Maybe I need to watch that. It's um, the VOD the is up on my YouTube. So. I'm going to see YouTube right now. Um, yeah. Uh, I think, what are you going to do for the rest of today? I'm going to take it really chill and really easy, um, I think, for the rest of today. I, I would um, love to do that. I've done none of my weekend chores. I have I have one load of laundry that buzzed at me while we were streaming. I had another in the washer that's going to need to get dry, and I need to put both of those away and pay bills and do stuff. And bleh. <laughs> it's not fun. Bleh. But uh, now, usually after stream on Sundays is kind of my chores time because uh, I usually mess around before stream. So, um yeah, I'm probably going to be taking care of some chores if I have any time left after that. Uh, probably just, like, playing some games privately on my own. Because, like, I game on my own time, too. So. But I do have some nice news from work. Uh, my current employer uh, not only gives us off for Memorial Day, which is not this coming Monday, tomorrow, but the one after that. So we get off for that. But I also get off Friday because, for some reason, my employer is like, yeah, take off the Friday before Memorial Day weekend, too. Have fun with it. Four-day weekend. 
and two weeks oh. that are four days each. So I get some extra time off. And a couple of my other coworkers are like, well, we're all contractors, so we're just going to work 10 hour days each, you know, each day in the week leading up to it because then we can get our full paycheck and still get our time off. And I, I was in like a one on one meeting with a manager and I'm like, so they said they're going to do that. I'm not doing that. I, I will just take that hit to my money and just take the extra day off. Uh, I, I've learned to value my free time and I want my free time. Rightfully so. so. It is your time. Yeah. Yeah. Be sure to get plenty of rest, folks. Never undervalue yes. the point. The, never undervalue the value of time off and rest. It is so useful. So. Yeah, absolutely. But, all right. So we have we have been going. <sighs> yes, my so, brain is fried. <laughs> uh. <laughs> so, do we want to do a raid? Yeah, I'm happy to read out. Um... Uh, I know somebody that is currently doing a subathon day one. They usually do a bunch of ASMR content. Not they they save for Twitch ASMR content. Um, mm. uh, and they are currently doing Ooh, a like... subathon that just started today. Uh, their name is Gentle GF. Gentle, yeah, like the... gentle girlfriend. Basically, yeah. Uh, they are currently playing Baldur's Gate 3. But, uh, yeah, they they have a really nice channel. They have a really nice, cozy community. And uh, they're who I would like to raid today. Uh, like I said, they're also playing I... Baldur's Gate. Oh. Yes. Very nice. I, I will leave you to raid to them. Okay. Uh, I will probably raid out to someone a lot smaller. <laughs> Fair enough. Because, <laughs> uh, yeah, that, that's what I want to do today. Uh, um... Nothing wrong with that. Nothing wrong with that at all. Uh, but... I hope you have a lovely time with the Borders Gate 3 gentle community. Thank um, you. I hope you have a wonderful rest we of your will... weekend. We'll probably be back together again in, what, four months sooner, unless... Month or two, something yeah. Something big happens. Because mm. uh, if something big does happen, obviously we'll, we'll get together a lot sooner. Yeah. Um, let's hope it's nothing too bad. I hope it's something good. If it's something good that brings us together, that will be a good day. Even better. Very good day. Yeah. <laughs> and with that in mind, um, Deus, thank you so much for having me. You as well. Thank you, you for having me. Have a lovely rest of your day. You too. And, um, to both you and uh, your lovely community. Oh, thank you. Yes, yeah. Draconians, make sure you're following this. Please do. Um, and, I need to, uh, I need to find a chat name for time. my team. <laughs> Sorry? So I need to find a name for my chat and community because I just keep calling them chat. I don't have one yet. Canes? I don't know. Yeah, uh, I'll brainstorm it. Yeah, brainstorm. Throw it, throw it out there. See what, yeah, see what gets eaten up, really. Mm. Um, but yeah, until next time, dears. I will say goodbye to you now, and then we'll do a little bit of just chatting and then raid out. I think over on our end. Yeah. All right. All right. Have a good one. I'll see you later. Take care, dears. Bye bye. Bye.